Hello and welcome to this video for Learning Publisher Exercise 41. And today we're going to be working with our newsletter template. So maybe you're working with your schools, maybe your school has a newsletter that it creates, maybe you're working with someone for your job or something else that you are part of. And so you want to make a newsletter and we're going to cover that uh, here. Now, of course, if you want to get to this, you just click on built in in our templates like we've been doing for the past few exercises. And then you just scroll down till you find newsletters. So you can see for me, it's third row from the bottom and newsletters is over here and I can select that. Now, with the newsletter, we're going to take a look at a few things because it is different than the other setups. Of course, this is still the same. You pick one of the installed templates over here. You'll see how it looks. You can see I have my color scheme. And of course, font scheme like usual business information. In exercises, if I don't emphasize a specific business information, just go ahead and pick one um, from here. You know, what do you have on your computer? Because you'll probably be changing the text that it fills in, anyways. Then we also have our page size one page spread and two. So basically, the idea of you can open up the newsletter. Uh, and then, of course, you can include the customer address. So very simple to create. I'm going to go ahead and create it here for the sake of demonstration because. Uh, you can see here, of course, this is a general idea of what it looks like. And when you start messing around with the text boxes, you're going to notice that they're linked together. And that's what we're going to be working with today. The idea of once you type something in here and it fills up, it'll go over here to this next text box. And it's because it's linked together. Now, uh, you can see when I go here to the Format tab and Text Box Tools, I have my linking section, and I can create a link if I need to. I can break one. So you can see these are already linked together, and I can go back and forth between these text boxes. And you can link text boxes from different pages as well. So we have four pages here to work with. I can choose Break. You notice it's no longer linked together. And if I select the text box, I can go up here. Oh, it looks like it says it's still linked to something else. Let's break that as well. There we go. Uh, so I had to select this one. And you can see there's red dots around. That means there's more words here than what their needs um, can fit. And so I can go and click Create Link and then go to a different text box and select it. So you can see this one here is blank. There's a text box here. There's a paint bucket. As you can see, the idea of it spilling over into the next one. If I click and select it, it will link it together. And that's how we can auto flow or choose to flow the text from one to another. And that's the idea. It's a story um, they refer to it in Publisher. So you can do that. Uh, also, if you want to change the hyphenation, remember up here, text box tools, format, and then hyphenation. And we can automatically hyphenate it, or we can uncheck it, and it will not hyphenate the story for us. Just the idea of making it fit more along this edge. Uh, also, too, you can change the column layout for each of the pages. So there's columns here um, that it deals with, and you can see, but it's dealing specifically with the one text box. So you don't want to do that um, for changing it. If you want to change the column format um, for this, uh, it would be, you would need to go to page design, excuse me, uh, and then of course, options. So page design and then options. And you can see we have it selected over here, uh, and then we can change it from one, two, or three, or mixed. Um, and you have to go through, uh, you should be able to just do two, okay, and then it switches it, and it should have gone through and switched all of them. So, uh, of course, you can always, um, page setup, there's this thing too you can mess around with, but the way it's referring to columns this time, um, make sure you're doing it the right way, which is this. So, dealing with that, of course, to put in content in here, you just click, it selects it all, and you'll end up typing in what you want. We talked about linking it. Uh, you can also add a continued from notation for your stories. So say here um, on the first page, I go and decide to add a story and I want it to be continued from something else. What I can do is if I go to text group over here, click text dialog box launcher, you can see uh, that I have here the option of include continued on page, include continued from page, and I can check those boxes as well. And of course, again, dealing with columns here um, a little bit more with just specifically that. But that's one way you can do that too. So uh, we're going to be working with all those different things today here as we're working on our newsletter. So I'm going to close out of this. We're going to actually make one. So make sure you're following along and doing these steps now with the video. And remember, don't be afraid to pause the video and go back, watch a few seconds, 
again in case you didn't understand something or you missed it. It's very easy to do, especially if you're watching this at a speed faster than the normal speed. All right, so click built in because we're going to be starting by making our newsletter. So built in, let's go down to newsletters. And we're going to select a few things here. We need to select here. Apparently, it says radial newsletter design. So it's not in my install templates group. It's over here in more. So I'm going to scroll down until I find the R section. And I can see it's the first R right here, radial. And then we need to change a couple of things before we push the create button. So it needs to be field scheme. You can see I already have that selected. So make sure you get to that field scheme. We have galley for our font scheme. Remember, it's this word up here. That's the font scheme. These are just the fonts it uses. Business information, don't worry about the specific one. Just go with whatever you have there. We're going with two page spread, and it says add a placeholder for customer address. So we're going to include customer address. All right, let's click create. All right, so here's our information. We have our wonderful newsletter. I'm going to zoom in here for you so you can see it better. Let's save it here as well before we get started with anything else. So click the save button. You're choosing which folder to save it to. So it might be a flash drive or a different location. We're saving as 41 news underscore your initials. So 41 news underscore your initials. It says change all the pages to two column layout. So let's go over here to page design. We're going to click on in the template group options. And here we have columns. Let's change it to two and select OK. And it should have applied it to all the different pages here. Um, if for some reason, let's check. Oh, it looks like, OK, for this one, we are going to have to just go through each page and select it. So uh, you'll notice I click on two and three options. It says left insides page. And we're going to switch it to two and click OK. And let's do it again. Still with the selected options, right inside page and select two. So it looks like we have to go through each page. Click OK. And also number four. So click two. OK, so we've applied two columns to the whole thing. I would be saving throughout this process as well. Um, something we need to do is we're going to apply a calendar content layout to page number two, so the inside left page. So let's click on page two and three again. Click options. And then over here, it says left inside page, and we're choosing calendar. And you can see we have our different content we can use. I'm going to click OK. And when I move over, you can now see we have a calendar here that wasn't there before. All right, let's go to the first page because we need to change some content. On the first page, it says for the newsletter title, let's change it to Art Update. Art Update. And then the business name, so down here where mine says Computer Lab, it's whatever text is down below that. We're going to be changing this to Arts and Crafts Unlimited. So Arts and Crafts Unlimited. Oh, I accidentally went and typed to see. I'm going to have to do it again. Arts and Crafts Unlimited. Something that is a bit of a pain with the template is the fact they'll make it so you delete everything when you push backspace. So Arts and Crafts Unlimited. It says replace the date placeholder with the current month and year. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So the date placeholder, that's up here, newsletter date, and with the current month and year. So current month and year for you. Right now, me, when I'm recording this video, it's May 2019. If it's a different month and year for you, put down whatever is current. All right, delete the following objects from page one. So we got to delete a few things. It says, first off, special points of interest. So over here to the right, we're going to get rid of that. I click along the outline edge here. You can see it looks like this. And then I push delete or backspace. So special points of interest. Let's get rid of inside this issue. That's in the bottom right corner. We have two things for it. So I delete that. And I delete this as well. And then what I need to do is it says delete the picture and caption. So the picture and caption is this right up here. So you can see the picture and the caption are grouped together. And then get rid of it says the secondary secondary well story headline and its text box. So up here, or excuse me, down here, I'll get rid of that. And then I'll get rid of this text box and also this text box as well. All right, so this is what our first page looks like now that we've gotten rid of everything. 
So it's less cluttered, which in some ways is good. Maybe you want to fill the whole page. Maybe you want less. So I'm going to save it here. And then it says, change the lead story headline. So up here, our first one, lead story headline. I click on it once. We're going to change it to come see what's new. Come see what's new. And it says to replace this sample text. So I click on the text box here. It selects it all. It says to replace it with the text from Pub41 Imports. So this is something you should download. Let's click on the Insert tab. Of course, to insert text, we could click on Object, but we're going to click with Insert File. And I'm going to go to where I have the file saved. You should have it, hopefully, in Downloads, or if you saved it to your flash drive. So Pub41 Import. So right here, Pub41 Import. I click OK. You can see it may take a little bit to do it. Now, right now, it's asking us, do we want to auto flow to this box? And it's putting it in another one. We're not going to do that. So um, instead of clicking, it says to skip, this, well, to skip the selected box, click no. But we actually don't want to do auto flow just yet. So we're going to click cancel instead. So right now, I click cancel, and you can see it is. Uh, filling in these two text boxes, and I still I have these red side uh, size handles around it, which tells me that there's more text. But we're not going to flow have a flow just yet. So we have this here. Let's click on text box tools format because we're going to get rid of the hyphenation. So over here on the left side in the text group, we're going to uncheck the box here for hyphenation and click OK. So uh, it, and because these are linked together, you can see. Um, they are linked between the two of them. It is, uh, excuse me, it is um, filling in better. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little under the weather, so may have a few brain pauses here. All right, so we have turn off hyphenation. I'm going to save it again throughout the process. Extend the text boxes for the lead story to the bottom of the page. So let's do that. Now we're not going to go right to the bottom of the page. It's going to be more uh, along the lines of here. I'll move it down and a pink. Page margin should come up. It looks like nope, it's not. So I'm going to go to about the 10 inch mark here. So you can see how that looks. And then let's do that with this box as well. If I bring it down, more than likely the pink will come up for with the other box. Otherwise, yep, right here at the 10 inch mark. Now you can still see there is more text. There's those red size handles. And we're going to take that care of that in a bit. Um, but I brought it down to the 10 inch mark on my ruler over here for the vertical guide. Or the, yeah. For up and down. Okay, so we have that. Now it says turn on include continued on page option for the last text box on page one. So here's the last text box right here. Clicked on it, got it selected. We are going to go over to our text group and click on the dialog box launcher. And then over here it says choose continued on. And we're going to click OK. Now it's not necessarily going to come up yet because we haven't continued it anywhere. Now we need to go to pages two and three because we're going to be deleting some things. So click two and three over here. Right now I'm sitting on page two, or actually three. Let me go over to two. It says delete the following objects from pages two and three. We need to delete quote boxes, which it looks like there's none on page two. But um, when I go to page three, it looks like over here, the far right, you can see it's this thing right here. I can click along the edge, push delete. And then it says also get rid of figures in their captions. So any of the pictures and captions, I got one up here. I got one right here. Now let's go back to page two and right over here. Got another one. Push delete. So I get rid of those figures and captions. And then second and third stories, including both heading and title and text boxes. So second and third title and head and text boxes. So let's do that. So I'm going to get rid of second and third. So um, on page three, we're going to get rid of that. So second here, get rid of these. And then the third one down here. Get rid of this. 
All right, so we have it. It looks like this right now. So it's just the story down here, and then we have the one over here as well. All right. In the remaining headline text box, it says, change it to what's new. So now it's dealing with page number three that we're talking about. So let's go over here um, with this one. And we're going to change this one to what's new. I was making sure I was getting the right one. We may end up deleting the one over here later. But for now, let's leave it there. So what's new is the title of this one. It says delete the sample text and flow the story from page one into text boxes on page number three. So let's get rid of this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and let's click on the second text box. So this one on the right. So I went to page one, click on this text box. Let's go to text box tools, click format. We're going to create a link. Now we know that these are linked together, but we're going to link this one. So make sure you clicked on this box, click create link. And you notice we get this paint bucket now. That means it's going to spill over choosing flow. I'm going to click on two and three. And I'm going to go to this text box right here. And you can see now it changes. It's got like that spilling cursor now. And I click on it. And you can see it's spilling now into our new story. It says to lengthen the text boxes so they occupy the whole page. So what we're going to have to do instead is let's take the what's new. And we're going to move it all the way up to the top. So I was going to try to move with the arrow keys, but it's way too slow. So let's just move it way up here. Still try to keep it lined up on how far it is on this left side and keep moving it all the way up here. So about right here. And then let's lengthen those text boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see almost the whole page just for the sake of making it easier. OK, so um, first text box, I click on here. And let's move it all the way up here, the size handle. So I grab that middle one. And let's move it up to what's new. And then let go. You can see the pink lines there. It's snapping to it. And then let's click on the second one. And let's extend it here and bring it up. And there you go. You can see now it's filling the whole page. And it's all linked together. So if I push previous, it goes to here. And if I push previous again, it goes to our first page. So good job linking this whole story together. So we've got all this. We've got it set up now. All right, so once we've done that, it says, of course, extend the text boxes. We already said that. And then it says number 17, or excuse me, step 17. You don't have to worry about the number. Uh, it says turn on include continue from page option for the first text box containing store continuation on page three. So I'm going to click on this text box right here. And let's go to format for text box tools. We're going to click on, or excuse me, we, we need hyphenation. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Right here, um, dialog box launcher. And we're going to click on continued from. So include continued from and click OK. So you can see this says continued from page one. And over here on page one, we have continued on page three. So these should be visible now because both of them are linked together. So good job doing that. Now it talks about, if you're reading the book um, that I'm looking at here for this exercise, it talks about we're going to edit the story in Word. We're not going to do that. It's much simpler to just edit it inside of the document itself. So what we need to do, it says, from both lists in the story, make them, or excuse me, um, before we do the bulleted list, it says, change the story text to Arial 9-point font, and then return to publisher. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through these text boxes, select this text, change it to well, first off, we do need to select all the text in the story. So I click on this box, hold down Control and push A. Let's switch it to Arial. That's the first step we need to do. And I push Enter, and you can see it switches it. Now, after I've done that, I need to go through. And besides the title, don't select the titles. We're changing it to 9-point font. So I select the text, push Decrease, and it goes to 9. I go to this stuff, select the text, push the down arrow, it decreases, go to 9. And you're going to go through your story and do that. 
and it looks like I gotta do it again. You'll notice it's gonna change sizes on, or it's gonna change placement on you here. So make sure you're getting all the stuff with it. So it's funny, I almost I'll select this here and change it down to Arial 9. And I kind of have to do that again with this right here. So you make sure you're getting all the text. Then we go to page three. And we are almost done with it. So go through and do this now. And two, once I finish this, if you're still doing this, wrapping this up, then just go and click the pause button. So I gotta zoom out so I can see all of it here. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna go to here and reduce it to nine and one more time here. So we're not changing any of the headings as you can see. Okay, and select this. There we go. So we got Arial, nine point font for our normal text. And that says for the bulleted list, we need to change those. So there's one on page one, and there's also one on page three. So let's go to page one and change that. So you can see over here, this list, it says we need to change it to a bulleted list and set the spacing after the paragraphs to zero point. So let's select this text. And we're going to go up to here where it's like bulleted, bulleted list. I'm just going to push the button here and, of course, select one. Now you can see here we have these little hyphens. So you have to click in front of the word set, push backspace twice, and get rid of it. So I click in front of the word set and get rid of that extra spacing. Then let's select this again. We're going to go up here to our paragraph group. We're going to click the dialog box launcher. And we're going to select here down where it says line spacing. We're going to get after paragraphs. This needs to be zero. So I'm just going to click here, backspace, zero, and push enter. We're OK. And it should look like this. And let's go over to the other page as well, do the same thing. So page three, right here, here's our list under what's new. And we're going to go and change it to a bulleted list, as we said. Then let's click in front of these words. Push backspace twice to get rid of the space and the hyphen. And then select it again. And for spacing, we're going to click the dialog box launcher. Click after, so after paragraphs, we click here. Change it to zero. Push enter. Voila, it looks like that. All right, we're almost done with this first part. I know this is a longer exercise. I push save because I do want to save throughout. All right, we have a couple pictures to put in. We got to print it. We'll be done with this part of the exercise, the first file. First, we got to place 41 pastels JPEG on page one. So let's go to page one. Let's make sure we don't have anything selected. So I'm actually going to click along this side part, make sure nothing's selected on the page. Click insert and choose pictures. You're going to go to where you saved your pictures. So I'm going to go to where I have them. Uh, yours is more than likely in downloads if you download it from online. And we need 41 pastels, so it looks like this. Now there's a few things we want to do. Number one, we got to shrink this thing down a lot, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to be making it about, I'm going, I'm changing it down here. You see I grabbed the top left corner and I went to about the five and a half inch mark on the ruler, so it's about this size. Uh, and then let's, it pretty much just needs to go along here. So you can see it's set up like this. So make it about this size, set up here so you can see it's about two inches um, long. And then let's go over to page number three. We need to insert 41 loom on page three. So again, I'm clicking along this side here. You don't want to accidentally insert in one of the text boxes. Click insert pictures. That's saying if it gets rid of your tech, text and messes it up, um, then you need to change that. Push undo and fix it. All right, 41 loom is what we're selecting. Click insert. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it uh, along the side as well. So let's reduce it here. I'm going to bring it down to about where the 12 inch mark is for right now. Because you can see, um, even with our text here, it doesn't fill up. Let's check. So it looks like we're covering on the text box. Let's try moving it down here to the bottom corner. OK, so it looks like this size is pretty good. Um, and let's put it, we're going to actually go and let's put it in the bottom corner. 
over here. So it's going to look like this, and of course your text goes to about right here. All right, I'm going to save it. You do need to print PDF, but here's the thing. You only are printing pages 1 and 2, so make sure for pages, you get 1 through 2. You should have Microsoft Print to PDF selected for the printer, so I'm going to switch that over. And then I'm going to choose Print. You're going to save it with the same name you've been doing for this file, so 41 news underscore your initials. So 41 news underscore your initials. All right, that's the first file. We're going to make one more newsletter here before we're done, and this is where you get to choose more of what you're doing. So I'm going to click Close. I'm going to choose Save, and then let's do a new one. So new, built-in, and we're going to go down to Newsletters. Now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making a newsletter about your favorite subjects. Okay, a newsletter about your favorite subject. I want you to choose which type of template you go with, so pick something different. And then also um, choose a different color scheme, choose a different font scheme, business information. Of course, you can basically go with what you have. I would change it to one page spread and don't include customer address. Okay. Click create once you've selected those things. Now, here's what you're going to need to do you're going to create a newsletter devoted to your favorite subject. Let's save it here and then I'll give you more instructions about it. So, save it. Of course, saving it to your flash drive, to whatever folder you need to. And then we're going to be naming it here 41 My News underscore your initials. So, 41 My News underscore your initials. Now, there's a few things it's telling us to do. And I'm going to go, and in Microsoft Word, I'm going to type a list up here for you to see of the things that you need to add to this because I'm not going to go through it with you. You already just I already showed you how to do these steps here just a little bit ago. So for this one, you're going to need to if I can bring this up here. There we go. All right. First thing is you're going to have to write a few articles and make at least one of them wrap to a later wrap to a later page so just like how we did now if you want to find an article about the subject online and copy and paste it that's fine by me so rather than you having to write an article about it I would pick the subject now it needs to be one you are taking here at school find an article about it you can copy and paste it as opposed to having to write one okay because you don't want to take too long with this then also Delete placeholders for any items you don't use. Oh, yeah, for items you don't use. Select and insert clip art and or photos that complement your article. In other words, it should be something that fits with your topic, not just a random picture. Okay. Then uh, what you need to do is after you finish putting those things in, go ahead and save it and of course submit it. Okay, so these are the different big things you need to have here. Pick your subject you want, write a few articles or copy and paste them, make one of them wrap like how we did, delete placeholders for the items you don't use, and include clip art. So I would get at least two articles, I would say. And if you get a long enough one, they can spread to the other pages and fill them up. So that's going to be the way you're going to want to fill this because you got four pages here. Okay. So make sure you do those things. Let me show you the files that you need to have here. Submit for this exercise. So again, this is a longer one. I understand that. But try not to take too long as in don't dawdle because you are already having to use a lot of time for this. So three files you're submitting. We got 41 My News. That's the publication you're going to be working on now. And then you have 41 News, um, Publisher, and PDF as well. So those three files, good job following along. I know this was a longer one to follow, so good job doing that. And that is how you complete Learning Publisher exercise number 42.